all right so let us discuss motion in a plane so let's suppose there is some object which is moving on a plane surface okay so suppose it moves its path looks something like this so it starts from this position okay so it is moving on this plane it starts from this position and it's moving along this path right so we can choose two axes okay the x axis and y axis these are two reference lines to locate the position on this plane okay so the particle or an object is starting from this position so to locate its position we draw a vector okay we draw a vector from the origin so this is the this is the vector okay which shows the position of particle at start so we'll call it the position vector so this vector is called as what it is called as called as the position vector of the particle at the beginning so what is r not it is position vector at t equals to 0 so after some time t suppose this particle or an object it moves till here so its position vector will be like this okay this is r at time t right so r at time t is the position vector of that particle at some time t now how much would be the displacement so we know what is displacement it is it is the straight line joining the start point and end point okay so <coughs> i'm sorry so this is the displacement vector okay so let's call it delta r bar delta r bar delta r bar is my displacement vector okay so delta r bar is the displacement this vector plus this vector will give you this vector yes no yes sir yes sir okay yes, sir. so can i say that using the triangle law of vectors addition triangle law i get that r not r not bar plus delta r bar is equal to rt bar and therefore delta r bar is equal to rt bar minus r not bar okay so the displacement vector okay the displacement vector is equal to what it is change in position it is final position vector minus the initial position vector okay we can see it here right so i can write the displacement vector displacement vector is equal to final position vector final position vector minus the initial position vector okay so you got the displacement now this displacement will be carried out in some time so let's call it delta t okay so you can find out average velocity if you know that time so now the average velocity average velocity from t equals to 0 to that time t okay so in the interval delta t i can say average velocity v average it will be a vector quantity and it can be written as delta r bar divided by delta t right where delta t is the time interval and now see what we can do here so now we know about vectors we are equipped with the knowledge of vectors so what we can do is we can take this delta r bar which will be like this this is my delta r bar and we can resolve it along two perpendicular components okay so this is my delta r bar let's suppose it is like this we can resolve this along two perpendicular components so this is delta x bar and this is delta y bar 
sorry so this is your delta r bar so we can write we can write this as v average is equal to delta x bar divided by delta t plus delta y bar divided by delta t or if you can use i mean if you use the unit vectors in x and y direction it can be written as delta x upon delta t multiplied by i cap plus delta y divided by delta t multiplied by j cap and therefore now see what you have achieved by doing this you have resolved the displacement along two perpendicular components so you are looking at the displacement along x direction and along y direction separately independently okay so v average is equal to you can say it is vx times vx times i cap plus vy times j cap this is your v average okay and how much would be its magnitude so how much will be its magnitude i can say in this triangle the delta r square is equal to delta x square plus delta y square right and therefore i can say that vav is equal to square root of this is we are applying the resolution here okay so it is vx square plus vy square this is the magnitude which you can call as average speed in this much time so got it yes no yes sir similarly what we can do is so if you look in this graph so now velocity at this position okay it will be directed like this if you find out instantaneous velocity velocity at this position it will be directed like this so do you agree with this yes no if you want to find out instantaneous yes, velocity yes, sir. you will draw a tangent right so at this point at this instant the object is moving in this direction at this instant the object is moving in this direction so let's suppose okay and how do you find the instantaneous velocity you will take derivative right so for instantaneous velocity the instantaneous velocity velocity okay v v bar is given by what you you will take derivative okay so you will take limit delta t tends to 0 of delta x over delta t multiplied by i cap plus delta y multiplied by delta t multiplied by j cap delta y upon delta t multiplied by j cap so that will give you the derivative of x with respect to t that is instantaneous velocity in x direction this is instantaneous velocity in y direction so it is vx times i cap plus vy times j cap and now these are instantaneous velocities what did i do okay this is wrong okay so by taking the derivative you will find the instantaneous velocity right after that if you consider that diagram again the path of the object again so let's suppose at this position at the start the object is moving in this direction so its instantaneous velocity at this point let's call it v naught bar is directed in this direction at this point after some time t it's moving in this direction okay at this moment so this is velocity at time t now how will you find out acceleration given you know the time difference you will subtract this initial velocity from this velocity right yes no yes sir yes sir okay so magnitude of the velocity it may remain same it may change okay so here magnitude may remain constant or it might change so you will take this or you will take this put it over here 
Okay, so initial velocity, I will write this Vt, Vt bar like this. So initial velocity is directed like this. Okay, this is V0 bar. I have drawn equal vector of this V0 bar. Okay, so vector which is directed in the same direction and having the equal magnitude. So I am taking this V0 bar and putting it over here to subtract it from Vt bar. So V0 bar plus this vector will give you Vt bar. So if I draw a vector like this, Okay, I will call it delta V bar. So I can say, can I say V naught bar plus delta V bar is equal to Vt bar and therefore delta V bar is equal to Vt bar minus V naught bar and in this diagram it is, it has got this much value. And this direction, is it clear? Yes, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there a question in this? No, sir. No, right? Okay. No, sir. See, <clears throat> then I can divide this by time. Okay, I can divide this by time. And then I get what? The average acceleration. So the average acceleration, average acceleration, A bar is equal to what? Delta V bar, which is Vt bar minus V0 bar divided by delta T. Okay. And similar to the previous case, this change in velocity can also be resolved in two components, right? The change in velocity in x direction and change in velocity along y direction. So what we can do is we can write this acceleration as delta Vx by delta T. Okay. So this will be Vx at time T minus Vx at time 0. Velocity in x direction at time T minus velocity in x direction at time T equals to 0. Okay. Times I cap plus delta Vy by delta T times J cap. And this can be written as Ax multiplied by I cap plus Ay multiplied by J cap because change in velocity in x direction divided by delta T is acceleration in x direction. This is acceleration in y direction. So the acceleration can also be resolved in two perpendicular components and therefore what do you get? You get the magnitude of acceleration as square root of Ax square plus Ay square. Okay, so we can resolve everything, we can resolve displacement, we can resolve velocity, we can resolve acceleration, force, momentum, etc, etc. Okay, so the point to be noted is we can look at the displacement, net displacement as, <coughs> sorry, as the sum of two perpendicular displacement. Okay, net any quantity right any quantity displacement velocity acceleration as sum of two quantities and we can study motion along x direction motion along y direction separately okay so for an example let's suppose you have uniformly accelerated motion so how do you write the second kinematic equation for uniformly accelerated motion so you write s is equal to ut plus half at square okay so this will be what because our particle or an object it is moving in a plane we can write it as s bar is equal to u bar times t plus half of a bar times t square so we can break this down into two equations and we can study those two equations separately how so i can write this as sx bar this is my displacement in x direction only so this is equal to what x at time t minus x at time 0 and it's equal to ux times t plus half of ax times t squared. Okay. And since, <coughs> okay, you can put the bar over here. 
and since everything will be multiplied with i cap on b so you can forget about the bars also okay so you can write x t minus x naught you can write what x t minus x naught is equal to u x plus half of a x multiplied by t square so this is displacement in x direction and similarly you can write displacement in y direction as <laughs> y t minus y naught it's equal to u y times t plus half of a y times t square this is the uniformly accelerated motion and you have broken the equation of uniformly uh, accelerated motion down into two components okay so you got two separate equations okay so you can look at the motion as two different motions so when you look at the motion in x direction don't need to worry about y direction when you look at uh, the motion in y direction motion along y direction you don't need to worry about anything in x direction not the acceleration not velocity no forces anything okay so that is the plus point of using vectors so you got this yes no yes sir any questions yes sir no questions right no sir so similarly what we can do is if object is moving in space we can break its motion down in three perpendicular component so in that case the displacement okay for object moving in space for an object moving in space what can we say so its displacement so s bar can be written as what sx into i cap plus sy times j cap plus sz times k cap its velocity okay <clears throat> here we can write total displacement the magnitude of total displacement <coughs> i'm sorry <coughs> the magnitude of total displacement will be what square root of sx square plus sy square plus sz square similarly you can write it for the velocity which will be vx into i cap plus vy times j cap plus vz times k cap and its magnitude will be square root of vx square plus vy square plus vz square and for acceleration you can write this ax into i cap plus ay times j cap plus az times k cap and the magnitude will be square root of ax square plus ay square plus az square okay so this is clear yes sir okay so now let's try to solve some problems based upon this okay all right so let's see this problem this is from meet 2017 the x and y coordinates of a particle at any time are x equals to 5t minus 2t square and y equals to 10t respectively where x and y are in meters and t in seconds the acceleration of the particle at t equals to 2 seconds is so what should we do first dx by dt okay so let's find dx which is dx by dt d by dt of x Okay, so that is d by dt. Five minus four t. Okay, so it is d by dt of this thing five t minus two t square, and it is five minus four t, right? Okay, meters per second. Then acceleration in x direction is equal to <coughs> d v x by dt, and that will give you what if you take the derivative of this. Minus four. It will give you minus four. Okay, so minus four meter per second square. This is acceleration in x direction. What about acceleration in y direction? So for that, first find out v y. V y equals to d y by d t, and that is d by d t of ten t. So it's ten. V y equals to ten meters per second. So it is constant. That means there is no acceleration in y direction so ay 
is dv by by dt dv by by dt and it's equal to zero meters per second square. So how much would be the net acceleration? Minus four. It will be minus four, right? There is acceleration in x direction only, no acceleration in y direction. So the answer is minus four. Very simple, right? Next question. A particle is moving such that its position coordinates x, y are two meters, three meters at time t equals to zero, six meters, seven meters at time t equals to two seconds, and thirteen meters, fourteen meters at time t equals to five seconds. The average velocity vector from t equals to zero to t equals to five seconds is. Tell me. See, you want the average velocity vector. From t equals to zero to t equals to five seconds. So you will uh, you will pick the coordinates at t equals to zero and t equals to five seconds. So these are the coordinates. So x zero equals to two meters, y zero equals to three meters. Right? These are the coordinates. Then x at five equals to equals to thirteen meters. Y at five equals to fourteen meters. So thirteen meters. Y at five equals to fourteen meters. And now you can find out average velocity. So average velocity is equal to average velocity in x direction into i cap plus average velocity in y direction multiplied by j cap, which is you can say it is x at five minus x at zero. Divided by the time difference. Time difference is five times i cap plus y at five minus y at zero divided by five multiplied by j cap. Okay, so now you substitute the values. So what are the values? Thirteen minus two divided by five i cap plus this is fourteen minus three divided by five times j cap. So eleven by five, okay, and <coughs> eleven by five. So it is eleven by five. I cap plus J cap, right? So let's move on to next problem. A body is moving with velocity thirty meters per second towards east. After ten seconds, its velocity becomes forty meters per second towards north. The average acceleration of the body is. We we want to find out average acceleration. So body is moving with 30 meters per second. So let's draw east west north south. Okay. So body is moving towards east with some velocity. How much? Is 30 meters per second. After some time, after 10 seconds. Its velocity is 40 meters per second, so it is this much. Okay, towards north, right? Towards north, it is 40 meters per second. So you can say initial velocity v naught is equal to 30 i cap meters per second. Right, east is towards right. Okay, in positive x direction, you can say, and this is north. So, velocity at some time t. So this is this will be a vector. It is 40 j cap meters per second. So, what will be acceleration? So, acceleration, velocity at time t minus velocity at the beginning divided by time. Okay. So that is 40. J cap minus 30 i cap divided by how much is time? 10. So 4 <coughs> minus 3. Okay. So acceleration is equal to minus 3 i cap plus 4 j cap. Right. So this is the answer. Okay. And you want magnitude. So how much would be that? So a is equal five, to five meter per second square. Right, it will be five meters per second square. So square root of minus three square plus four square, five meters per second square. 
दिस इज द आंसर ऑप्शन डी सिंपल प्रॉब्लम राइट ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ पार्टिकल स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम ओरिजिन जीरो जीरो मूव इन स्ट्रेट लाइन इन एक्स वाई प्लेन इट्स कोऑर्डिनेट एट लेटर टाइम आर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ थ्री थ्री द पार्ट ऑफ द पार्टिकल मेक्स विद एक्सिस एंड एंगल ऑफ ओ so how to solve this this is very simple right it starts from the origin okay it starts from origin so i can draw this starts from origin so this is your starting point and after some time it reaches the square root of 3 3 okay so square root 3 and 3 somewhere here okay so this is your Drop like this. So this this will be the point root three three. Okay. So now can you tell me how to find out the angle? So tan theta. Tan theta. Okay. So this is your 60 angle. Sixty degrees. Sixty degrees. Okay. So tan of yes sir theta equals to this distance divided by this distance. So it is three divided by root three. Okay, so it will be root three. So theta should be tan inverse of root three. That is sixty degrees. Good. Okay. Good. Next question. A bus is moving on a straight road towards north with uniform speed of fifty kilometers per hour. Then it takes turns left through ninety degrees. So it was moving. <coughs> Towards north, and then it turns left. Okay, through ninety degrees, turns left through ninety degrees. If the speed remains unchanged after turning, the increase in the velocity of bus in the turning process is. Yes, can you tell me? So bus was moving like this, due north, and it takes a turn, like this. Starts moving towards. left so what is that towards west you can say okay so this is your initial velocity v i or v not and this is your final velocity v f so magnitude of both of them is equal so how to find change in velocity so just draw a vector like this right just draw a vector from starting velocity or initial velocity to final velocity okay so this plus this will give you this okay so this is your change in velocity and this is direction of change in velocity <coughs> same will be the direction of acceleration yes no yes sir and what is magnitude magnitude of this okay question is uh, increase in velocity only okay not the acceleration so we have to find out the magnitude of this only the change in velocity or increase in velocity and its direction also so what is this direction it is this direction right so if i draw east west north south which direction is this <coughs> south west south west okay south west direction so <coughs> so change in velocity is in south west direction or how much is its magnitude so there is only one option actually with south west so this must be the magnitude right yes yes, yes sir okay and you can check it it will be so this is 50 kilometers per hour in magnitude and this is also because magnitude is not changing so 50 kilometer per hour so change in velocity has a magnitude it will be 50 square plus 50 square in square root okay so square root of 
50 square plus 50 square and that is you can take 10 outside okay so it will be square root of 5 square plus 5 square 50 right so 10 multiplied by square root of 50 so about 7 point something okay so 7 times 10 70 point something right yeah so 70.7 kilometers per hour this is the answer next question is when an object is shot from the bottom of a long smooth inclined plane kept at an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal it can travel distance x1 along the plane but when the inclination is decreased to 30 degree and the same object is shot with the same velocity it can travel x2 distance the, then x1 is to x2 will be so you have object is shot from bottom of a long smooth inclined plane kept at an angle of 60 degrees so you have long smooth inclined plane at an angle of 60 degrees so like this and you you are shooting an object from the bottom okay from here with some initial velocity okay with some initial velocity let's call it u so it reaches some uh, till some distance and it stops so suppose it reaches this much distance so this is this much distance from here to here is x1 so this much distance is x1 and you take another plane another plane is like this it is inclined at 30 degree so this is 60 degrees this is 30 degrees okay so suppose this is theta 1 and this is theta 2 equals to 30 degrees and now you are shooting same object with same initial velocity on this plane so it reaches till some distance so this distance is x2 and you want to find the ratio of x1 is to x2 so what should we do okay there will be some acceleration right what is the acceleration acting on that object there is acceleration due to gravity okay so acceleration due to gravity is equal to g okay but that acceleration it is acting downwards not along the plane so what you can do is so this is your g you can resolve this g in two perpendicular components okay so we'll resolve the g along two perpendicular components like this okay like this so this angle is theta theta 1 how much would be this angle this angle 90 minus theta 90 minus theta and therefore this angle would be theta 1 this angle is theta 1 so now i am resolving g okay so it will have these two components so this this component this component and this component so one is along the plane and one is perpendicular to plane so this component which is perpendicular to plane it is g cos theta 1 and this one will be g sin theta 1 right yes no yes sir yes sir okay <clears throat> and similarly here you can resolve this one along two perpendicular components so this will be g sin theta 2 and this is g cos theta 2 you so see motion of this object is like this and g sin theta 1 the acceleration in direction of motion actually it is in opposite direction of motion so we'll take it as negative right so for first object you can say 
that v square okay because at this position its velocity will be zero so you can say v1 square equals to u1 square plus 2 times a1 into x1 okay because distance is given as x1 okay so v1 is equal to zero so you get u1 square plus actually it is in opposite direction so i will take negative sign so minus of 2 g sin theta 1 multiplied by x1 and therefore <coughs> you get the relation between u and x so what is that relation so u1 square is 2 times g sin theta 1 x1 okay same thing you can do with second object so you will get u2 square equals to 2g sin theta 2 x2 okay and then you can take the ratio of these two so <coughs> it's given that u1 is equal to u2 right it is short with same velocity so u1 is equal to u2 okay yes no yes sir so left hand side will be equal to 1 then 2g and 2g gets cancelled out so you can say okay this is equal to 1 if you take this x2 and x1 on left hand side you get or we want x1 or x1 is to x2 right so we'll take sin theta 1 and sin theta 2 on other side so x1 divided by x2 will be equal to sin theta 2 divided by sin theta 1 because this will go in numerator and this will go in denominator so x1 is to x2 equals to sine of theta 2 divided by sine of theta 1 okay and what is theta 2 and theta 1 this is sine 30 divided by sine of 60 degrees right which is 1 by 2 divided by root 3 by 2 or 1 divided by root 3 this is the answer okay so option d is the answer but if you remember one thing which will be handy afterwards also if your plane if your plane makes an angle theta okay makes an angle theta with the horizontal then how much would be the acceleration of a body which is rolling or moving along the plane it will be minus g sin theta yes okay yes, sir Okay. So, if you just remember this thing, you can directly write down this equation that v square equals to u square minus uh, 2g sin theta into x1 and similarly for the second one. So, no need to draw anything. Okay. So, if you just remember this fact, okay, you can solve it a little bit quicker, a half time. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, <clears throat> please remember this. So this will be handy for this kind of problem and there will be problems in laws of motion. Okay, in laws of motion also, there will be lots of inclined planes. Okay. So let's move on to the next problem. A particle has initial velocity. This is initial velocity and the acceleration is this one. It's speed after 10 seconds. This is very, very easy. Right. So V is equal to U plus AT. That is the formula. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so, this will be what? 3i plus 4j plus 0.4i plus 0.3j times the time, which is 10. So, how much would be that? 4, okay, this will be 4, this will be 3. So, 3 plus 4 and 4 plus 3. So, 7i plus 7j so this is the velocity and you want speed so speed will be what square root of 49 plus 49 or uh, it is 2 times 49 so square root of 49 is 7 7 times root 2 so 7 times root 2 meters per second this is the answer option b is the answer okay Two boys are standing at the ends of A and B of a ground. 
where AB is equal to A. So there are two boys standing at the ends. So this is A, this is B and AB is equal to A. The boy at B starts running in a direction perpendicular to AB with velocity V1. So boy at B starts running like this with velocity V1. Okay, with velocity V1. Then the boy at A starts running simultaneously. At the same time, the boy at A starts running with velocity V. Okay, and catches the other in time t. So he will have to run like this. Yes, no. Okay, at some angle. Yes, sir. And if he wants to catch this boy, the other boy, then the y component. Let's call this y and this as x. So the velocity of this boy who is at the position a. Okay. It will have two components. So it is he is running with velocity v. Okay. So that velocity, this velocity is v, and we can resolve it along two components. So one should be equal to what? So this should be equal to vy should be equal to v1 because in this direction this boy is running with velocity v1 so the y component of this boy the first boy okay who is at a it should be at least that much right yes no if he wants to catch the other boy yes sir yes, sir. x yes, component sir. can be anything okay if x component is less if this is infinite ground x component is less he will take more time okay to cover this much distance but y component must be equal okay if he wants to catch this other boy because this boy is running in y direction only okay so vx is something <coughs> sorry vx is something we don't know okay so now we can put this y component is equal to what v1 so yes this is v Okay, this is Vx and this much distance is V1. So we can say uh, we want to find out Vx. Okay, because we want to find out and how much time he will cover this much x distance. Okay, this much distance in x direction. So we can say that V square is equal to V1 square plus Vx square. And therefore, Vx square is equal to V square minus V1 square. <coughs> so, whenever he catches the other boy, so distance covered in x direction would be equal to what? It will be equal to A. Right? So, how much would be the time? So, we can say the time in which he catches the other boy will be equal to A divided by Vx. That is A divided by a divided by this thing v square minus v1 square so option d okay option d yeah there is a square here right so you can take it yes sir okay so option d is the answer so is this question clear yes sir yes sir yes sir okay so out of all of the questions, this was good, right? Okay, next question. Two particles A and B are connected by a rigid rod AB. So these are particles, two particles, they are connected by rigid rod. The rod is the rod slides along per <coughs> sorry, the rod slides along perpendicular rails as shown. So these are perpendicular rails. So okay. The rod slides along perpendicular rails as shown here. The velocity of A to the left is 10 meters per second. So this end is moving towards left with the velocity of 10 meters per second. What is the velocity of B when angle alpha is equal to 60 degrees? So what will be velocity of B when the angle is 60 degrees? 
<coughs> yes so here you can say that this is your x direction this is your y direction okay this is your x direction and now the y and x are changing so y is increasing x is decreasing and both are related so you can take dy by dx right dy by dx okay so dy by dx will give you tan theta okay it will be tan theta so this is clear till this point yes sir. yes sir and both of these changes will happen in same time okay both of the changes will happen in same time yes no because in the time yes, sir. this point moves by distance dx okay this point will move by distance dy okay because the rod is connected so you can divide it by time you can take dy by dt divided by dx by dt <coughs> that will be your tan theta and this is this is your dy by dt is velocity in y direction dx by dt is velocity in x direction and this is equal to tan of not theta this angle is alpha uh, anyways but it is equal to 60 degrees okay so vy is equal to tan of 60 degrees because we are given with the velocity in x direction right so vy equals to tan of 60 degrees multiplied by vx okay right so what is tan of 60 root 3 so root 3 multiplied by what is dx sorry vx 10. 10 so root 3 multiplied by 10 so uh, how much is value of root 3 1.73 okay 1.73 multiplied by 10 so 17.3 meters per second is the answer this is dy okay so option d is the answer so you got the question <coughs> sorry Yes, sir. Yes. So let's see this next question then. Rain is falling vertically downwards with the velocity of 4 kilometers per hour. Man walks in rain. Okay, this is a question from NCRT, if you know. Okay. Man walks in rain. I guess there was old woman in NCRT. They have they have replaced it with man. With a velocity of 3 kilometers per hour. Raindrops will fall on the man with the velocity of okay this is simple this anybody can do right the rain is falling vertically downwards so rain is falling vertically downwards okay with some speed whatever is speed <coughs> this is velocity of rain and man walks uh, in the rain with velocity of 3 kilometers per hour so suppose man is walking like this okay man is walking like this so this is velocity of man now the raindrops will fall on the man with the velocity of so now man is in motion rain is also in motion so you want to find the speed of raindrops okay velocity of raindrops with respect to man yes no okay so raindrops will fall yes. on the man with the velocity of Velocity of rain with respect to man, which is velocity of rain minus velocity of man. Right? So, you have drawn velocity of man. You have to draw this picture. This is minus Vm. <coughs> okay? Or directly, if you want to do, this is velocity of man. Velocity of man plus this thing. Okay? Plus which thing? Plus this vector. Plus this vector. Okay. This will be Vrm. Velocity of man plus this is equal to velocity of rain. Okay. <coughs> and therefore, you can say Vrm is equal to what? Velocity of rain minus velocity of man. Can you say that? Yes, sir. Okay. Apply the triangle law this plus this is equal to this so this is what 
this minus this okay and then you just want the magnitude so it is minus or plus they are at 90 degrees with respect to each other right so how much would be the magnitude of this vector so magnitude of vrm is square root of vr square plus vm square okay so that is 4 square plus 3 square okay that is 5 16 plus 9 square root of that 25 okay so square root of 25 5 kilometers per hour this is the answer simple